842 at WALK Broadcasting Live this morning. We started at 5, and I have to say, it really has snowballed. We're getting uh, quite a bit of traffic into King Cullen on Vets Highway um, in Comac for our WALK Thanksgiving food drive. And uh, we thank you in advance for stopping by. Bring the kids on the way home from school today. Help make a donation. I think there was something that you mentioned, Cindy, earlier that... uh, really struck a chord with me that if you if you've never experienced being hungry opening your pantry when your kids are ready for dinner it, it's sometimes difficult to wrap your head around really what it's what it's like you yeah. know to, to put yourself in those shoes if you've never had the experience of, of needing food that you, you just don't have enough money to put food on your table it's such a, a bucket of emotion aside from just the, the physical loss of not being able to feed your kids but it's there's so much anxiety that goes with it and so much um, d- you're just so sad and so conflicted and you don't know what to just, do yeah and you don't know what to end. do you have nothing well, nothing to reach for that's why we're here today and that's why we're here uh, with the executive director of Long Island Cares Paul Pachter stop by of course as we do every year it's like our annual meeting <laughs> you know it's it's nice to see you paul Thank you, it's Sandy. great to have you here um you know as far as that goes you know uh, th- this is one of the reasons we're here is to is to get food in people's pantries so they don't have to face that dead end the wall and and, and in this day and age where are we in so far as, as as providing food for the needy how has the climate or the landscape changed over the years well you know i think in terms of the landscape uh, about people who need the support here on long island Uh, There are still many people who are struggling with unemployment or even more underemployment, people who have had full-time jobs, now have part-time jobs, and, you know, looking to see how they can, you know, just make ends meet. Uh, We've had an increase in the number of senior citizens who are turning to us uh, for our mobile pantry services and an increase in the number of veterans who are returning home, or disabled veterans who are already here. So the demographic, you know, there's a shift in terms of who needs the support, but even more significant, uh, Mark, is, you know, historically food banks are out there to provide emergency food uh, in order to help people, you know, get it together, move forward, and, you know, just, you know, be able to make it. But we're, we're finding more and more these days here on Long Island that food banks are really sustaining people, that just as they would go to a supermarket perhaps once a week, uh, they'll go to a food pantry once a week to do some Mm fill-ins because they just can't afford to purchase them given the other responsibilities and expenses they have. So we have to retool as an organization and look at what we need to do in order to help people maintain themselves. It sounds like a much longer term as opposed to like you're providing relief for victims of Hurricane Sandy or, or some, some uh, other natural phenomenon. This is sounding like it has to sustain for way longer than, than maybe it used to. Yeah, that's exactly true. And that was one of the reasons. And we saw this shift coming about three years ago. Uh, And that's one of the reasons why uh, we started to develop our own direct service programs, the food pantry, the mobile pantries, the uh, uh, community locations in Freeport and Lindenhurst in order to get to people quicker and where they're at. Uh, Because, you know, for some people it's difficult, you know, to put gas in the car and travel to Hop Hog. So we're really looking at, you know, emergency food and food banks becoming more ongoing hunger assistance centers. Wow. I was seeing, um, I, I'm on the feed for Long Island Cares Facebook page, mm-hmm. which is Facebook slash LI Cares. And I'm impressed by how many um, organizations and businesses, corporate offices are doing either contributions or putting in time in the warehouse helping out. Now, how do you reach those people? Like, what can you do to get a little more assistance on, on you know, on the corporate level? Well, we're very, you know, we're very fortunate in having a very active board of directors, and many of them are involved in corporate Long Island. I myself serve on the board of the Long Island Association. And also, you know, there's been a lot of events in the past few months that have put Long Island Cares in a very, you know, big spotlight. So people have been turning to us. Uh, And so, you know, we're very, we're extremely grateful for, for that because, you know, historically, Harry Chapin always said that corporate America has a responsibility to help. It can't always be government you know, the business sector, the private sector. And so, you know, we've benefited from that. When Billy Joel did the um, benefit performance at the Paramount, did that raise your awareness? Like, were were there people who didn't already know about Long Island Cares who then went, oh, my God, look at this? Yeah, I I think it absolutely had that impact. 
uh, wow. the fact that he, you know, decided to do that performance and identify with our organization. That was, was key. That was, that was huge. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Let's just get down to basics. Uh, w- things that you want people to donate in case you've forgotten or maybe you're new to the area and have not heard of this before. Things that you need. And I think there are a few things that we've been mentioning, but we want to make sure we mention the, the baby items. And also uh, we have uh, Baxter's pet pantry as well so what are some of the things you guys need well you know we're always looking for staple products like you know soups and canned meats and uh but there's also a very big need for personal care products you know things like baby diapers and even adult diapers uh household supplies people that need detergent people that may need you know soap uh, right now, unfortunately, we are experiencing uh, significant shortages in our pet food. You know, we've distributed over a half a million pounds of pet food wow. since we started the pet wow. pantry. Wow. And, uh, you know, it just continues to grow. And this is a time of year if we're talking about keeping families together. Uh, if you have a pet, they're part of the family. So we'd appreciate that as well, and specifically cat food. I just want to say, I, I think we are so fortunate to have an organization like Long Island Cares. Thank you. Absolutely. Really spectacular. Thank you, Paul Pactor, Executive Director of Long Island Cares. It's always As a pleasure. Always, always a, a pleasure, pleasure for, for us, too. I was just thinking the same thing. How long have I we been working with you? We a little too much time together Yeah, now. I think so. 847 <laughs> at WALK. Good morning. The Chrysler Big It's happening all the time. We're talking in tandem. It's just creeping me out. <laughs> Finishing each so other's funny. syllables. Because it sounds like we're doing it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, they rehearsed that. I no, know. we didn't. Thank you, Paul. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that nice.